Swim Good. Eure abendliche Laidback Show zum entspannten Abtauchen. Moderiert von Exil New Yorker Stimulus. Welcome to Swim Good Radio. I'm your host, Stimulus. This is our very special Bread and Butter Berlin 2017 edition. Brought to you by Boom FM, Flux FM, and our friends over at Rebox Classics. I'd like to send a special shout out to Kata and Jackie and their whole team for holding me down and holding down the Swim Good squad over at their booth doing Bread and Butter. Shout out to Sophie and the rest of the hosts who are there too. Shout out to all our special guests who came through. Marvin, Gabe, Harris, Balbina, Seto, Senna, Bass Bear, Kush Jones, DJ Swisher, DJ Creep, Joy representing Select Berlin and a whole lot more. And as if that wasn't enough, we having the virtual love crew stopping here, bringing their artists to the table. Shay Lingo, Kelvin Colt, and Mad Flows are gonna stop through to talk about their special event tomorrow night, September 7th, here in Berlin. Let's go. Yo, peace, everybody. We're here at Swim Good Radio, live from Bread and Butter. We got the homie Harris in the building. Say what's up to the people. What's up, people? What's up, world? You all right? All right, check, check, one, two. Here we are at Swim Good Radio. I'm chilling here with my man Marvin Gabe. Shouts out to I-75 from Mushi Kreuzberg yelling at us in the background. What up? Special guest in the house, the homie Seto, the one and only, yeah, the yeah, only yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, Say what's yeah. up to the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> little baby, the rain man, life from Brandon Butter. Balvina is here with you, with us. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm great, thank you very I'm much. I'm excited to see you because I didn't know about you and your music until I heard that you were willing to come. Mm-hmm. And I've been researching and listening to it. And I really like a lot of your vibes. Like I, I like like your, your fashion style. I like Thank your you. music too. And Thank I really you. I do, Thank I do, you. I really Thank do. You. Thank you. Um, and so we're at Rebox and obviously they do the modern and classic thing. So one of the things I want to ask you about in your music, I hear very modern elements and I hear very classic elements. So when it comes to music, do you have a preference for modern? sounds or classic sounds that you just play in the middle like what's your vibe when it comes to that well actually i uh i come from from the lyrics mm-hmm. i always start with texting okay um because i grew up in a um in neukölln in berlin uh, and i was like socialized with, with many rap artists okay. so when i started making music i came fl- from the lyrical thing you okay. know that you write your rhymes and then you um that's more like a poem and then when i uh, when i finish my 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 lyrics then i always think okay i would like to do a soundtrack for it what i'm gonna do okay. and then mostly that's so cliche but i'm mostly like influenced by you know like really soundtracks from like james bond or like really also like disney cartoons or something because they always make this particular small things like when somebody's running it's yeah. like, <laughs> and when i have and i when i have a song that it's um in a in a good mood or that's very happy then i then i'm trying to think so what would Walt Disney do when Mickey Mouse is running you know down the stairs and then okay. that's how I think a little okay. bit. Okay, yeah. interesting. And I yeah. can hear that you come from lyrical stuff like even when I think of the song titles of uh, uh, some of the songs I like like that song like um, but I don't like love like songs about love yeah, because yeah. in German the wordplay is yeah, cool. Yeah. So yeah. that's really cool. Um, so since you said you start with text and lyrical elements and you mentioned poetry Did you have, like, were were a lot of your influence rappers or songwriters? Or did you ever get influenced by poets as well? Yeah, um, like, mostly I'm influenced by um, writers. Like, really, um, really German writers from the 19th, 20th century. Okay, wow. Um, Because I read a lot when I was small. My mother was, you know, working. I grew up without a father, and I was, like, all the time, like, alone at home, and I didn't know what to do so I was reading like books 
and, and, and that's where I started from. And then I met, you know, the rap scene, and I and I had so many friends that were rapping, and they were, you know, rhyming, and, and, and that, it, like, you know, it came together somehow. Okay. Yeah. So when it comes to uh, the rap scene, do you have a preference there for like the modern style or the classic style? The classic style. Okay. I don't, I'm like, I feel old now, you know? <laughs> I'm 34 and it's Good. like, I just, uh, I, I get the modern things, you know? And, 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 and the mainstream modern things are okay with me, but the real, like, you know, the hypes that, that the here in Germany are, I, I don't really get it. I'm like a grandmother. I like really old school rap. I, you know, I grew up with Jay-Z. I, okay. I like this stuff, you okay. know. And in Germany, I always listen to uh, West Berlin. Okay. It was like in West Berlin, Royal Bunker and everything, like where, you know, Kul Savage came from. Okay. Or like, uh, like um, M.O.R., Masters of Rap. And, and that's what I listen to. I like the old school shit, the funky old school okay. shit. Yeah. And then um, when it comes... I like Dev, Dev and the Dude. It's like my favorite. Dev and the, the Dude. Yeah. 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 That's super funky. Yeah. And it's funny that yeah, said I just got up and from shit. LA. All those guys are from LA who were just yeah. here before you. That's super cool. Yeah. And now, um, a lot of times, uh, you have a really great sense of fashion. And, and before I get into your particular style and how you come up with a lot of the styles you wear or why you wear them, um, I wanted to ask briefly about you know the connection between music and fashion. You know, because like. Like you say, you like classic rap, and you like some of the old school stuff. And some would say there's a style associated with that, yeah. and a style associated yeah. with modern rap, or a yeah. style associated with pop yeah. music or yeah. house music. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, do you think that styles are, or fashions are associated with certain musics? Yeah, of course. So like when I was small, and we didn't have any money, but we wanted to have like dope sneakers, you know. It, I, I remember like my first pair of sneakers were uh, like Dunks from Nike yeah. and then the second one ones were like um, the Three Stripes Adidas oh, okay. because I, I saw them you know in the Run DMC video and, <laughs> and, um, and this is like this was the dope shit you want yeah. everyone wanted to have like these, these very clean and, and, and you know and nice pair uh, of uh, 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 yeah, of sneakers, yeah. everyone. And, and until now, you know, now I'm, I'm doing a lot of stuff by myself. I'm, I'm sewing my dresses, okay. I'm doing like, uh, you know, my, my, um, my whole appearance. Huh? But what I always stay true to are like sneakers. Okay. Every time I go on stage, I have like a pair of okay. nice, clean, white sneakers. So if your latest album cover where you're wearing the kimono inspired yeah. vibe, if that was a full shot, we would yeah. see sneakers under you it. You would see sneakers. <laughs> you would see because when you open the artwork, yeah. there is some sneaker stuff going on. Okay. You see that yeah. because I have a skirt that's uh, um, uh, oh, like knee, length. Leg. Oh, yeah, knee length. Yeah, knee length. And there you see sneakers. Always white sneakers and white socks. Always. Never. Okay. Never not wearing white sneakers and white socks. Okay, so now when we get into white sneakers, yeah, there's so many. Now you have a kind of a modern pair on. Do you have yeah. a preference in the modern style of white sneakers? Because nowadays modern it's sneakers dirty, are it's very raining. sturdy, very comfortable, yeah. and the old ones seem kind of bulky nowadays. Do you it, have a preference, or it doesn't matter? No, it depends because sometimes, sometimes I I, I see a modern sneaker which looks like an alien spaceship kind of thing, and then I like it, yeah. then I like it. Um, but um, I'm not for color, like mostly. Ah. I, I want to have them like really white. When there's something with colors going on, it's like, mm, I don't know, I don't trust them. You know? <laughs> but, but I also like classical sneakers, you know? That's, that's interesting. now. Do you not like the color because you like to keep the color? Because you've had some, I mean, the pictures I've seen. Yeah. Some very interesting colors and textures to yeah. the fabrics that you wear. Yeah. And so do you wear white to make sure the, the dress gets to breathe a little? Or maybe, is it just really? <laughs> may, maybe a little, but also somehow I think when I have white sneakers and white socks, that I can like move faster, that I'm light, you know, that I'm so light that I can jump, you know, from from one day to another. I don't know, it has like it's some, some kind of symbolical thing. Yeah. I don't really care about the fashion thing. I always wear them. And I always 
just wore them, wore them too when everybody was saying, oh my God, white, white socks, this is a no-go. And I was like, oh, it's... <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it. Oh my God. And there... <laughs> and there there's, and there's no, not much you can, uh, uh, you can do rock yeah. with, with white sneakers and white socks. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, everyone, we'd like to thank you for listening. Wherever you're listening, however you're listening, please send some warmth and energy and thanks to Valvina. And uh, please say goodbye to everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks bye. for listening. Bye-bye. Swim bye. Red Radio and Reflex Classics. See you thank later. You. Yo, peace, everybody. We here at Swim Good Radio live from Bread and Butter. We got the homie. Harris in the building. Say what's up to the people. What's up, people? What's up, world? You all right? We all right. We all right. Yeah, that's cool. That's, everything's OK. All right, that's what's up. So yo, I'm happy to have you here. You know, you want to you one of my inspirations here in the city. Real talk, real talk. I like your brand. I like everything you do. I like the way you move. And so we like the way you move. So thanks, 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 thanks. You know, you see that? From rapper to hip hop DJ to techno and G House DJ producer, now he's a soul singer. He already switched <laughs> right in the middle of the interview. But uh, no, real talk. So we had the Reebok booth where they doing like modern versus classic. And so with someone like you who has so many different kind of things you do, I wanted to talk to you about like in terms of music. What do you get? Like what do you like more? Like modern music or classic music or do you like them equally or what's your influence between the two? Like. In general, I just love like music. I think it depends on the mood that I'm in. If I like more classic hip hop, I would say now, or modern hip hop, like uh, what's that called? Cloud rap or <laughs> mumble rap. Uh, um, yeah, it d- determines on the mood that I'm in. If I'm more hypey, hypey, then I'm more into the, the cloud shit. If I'm Probably now the time is where I got to think a lot because I got new plans, like you said, the house techno shit, and I got to focus. This is where I listen to good old New York street hardcore rap because sometimes they say things that inspire me, influence me, game planning on how you should move, 10 crack commandments, <laughs> for example. Yeah, yeah. Get the basic shit, you know? <laughs> the shit we build up all our things on and sometimes you have to go back so sometimes it's classic and sometimes it's new all right i feel you now when we take when we step into the world of like fashion or like kicks like right now you wearing the crazy wavy reeboks i don't even know what model that is i bet you the product people don't even know but this is like some new vibes yeah and then we just hit you with the white classic so when it comes to fashion like particularly sneakers and stuff now where do you go there between modern and classic also the same probably yeah. probably the same explanation this now for me is this expresses what this <laughs> funky, fresh, uh, light blue, pink, purple <laughs> crossover with the party animal socks uh, probably expresses the most my my being. Yeah. And but I can also rock the clean white or clean black, and it also expresses my being. But it depends on the mood that I'm in. It's also the mood. Like now it's fashion shit here going on and you know, uh, I'm a crazy dude and everybody want to shine out. No, no, I'm shining. <laughs> you think y'all have crazy kicks, motherfucker? No, I have them crazy motherfucking kicks. Just because I don't wear them all the time, don't mean I don't have them. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you on that. I feel you on that. And now I want to go into like, like some of the movements, right? So like, you started out like rhyming and yeah. rapping, yeah. right? Then, we moved it to DJ, still on the hip hop side. It's uh, kind of different. I started DJ. Oh, <laughs> okay. See, I didn't know that because yeah. it was DJ Finish Nip. So yeah, yeah. Thinking, no, no, no. Geez. I started DJ. Well, somebody showed me how to DJ, and back in the days, like 20, 22 years ago, yeah. it was more that the DJ was hype man. Yo, throw your hands in the sky, wave from side to side, yeah. all that shit. And people came up like, Yo, man, your voice, your voice, man. You got a rep. I was like, Yo, I'm just learning how to DJ. I'm not gonna start rapping now. So, but then 
all of a sudden I was sitting at home with a dude smoking weed and I was like, hey, maybe I should rhyme. So I started writing a song about a girl that we all hit. And nobody showed me how to do uh, 16 bars or uh, how long a, a hook should be or how you flow or shit, nothing. Yeah. It just came out of, it just came out. And then uh, I took the song, went to a competition, won the competition right away here in Berlin. And just said, I'll start rapping. And while I was rapping, I still was DJing. But then rap was, I was getting pretty famous in rap. Yeah. So I didn't have no time for playing. <laughs> <laughs> But then we had them after show parties or echo after show parties and all my friends knew that I knew how to spin. And when the DJ was back, they was like, hey, yo, please go there. And I was like, yo, I don't have my records with me. Okay. It's like, hey, I don't care, you play now. So I had my friends going to the DJ, I was like, go move. My homies play now. So I had to rock a party with records I don't even know. And that's how this shit came. When the owners came, was like, hey, but you the rapper. So what's your DJ name? No, no, DJ Finish Nish. Ah, okay. Ooh. Skill, story, story, <laughs> history, baby, history. <laughs> and so now, you've been doing like this G House and electronic vibes, like DJ and production wise. Like, yeah. And how did you make that movement? Um, I've been going out to techno also since 20 years, like when this rapping fame came, uh, I couldn't go to no normal party. Yeah. Because it's always pictures, autographs, blah, and like sometimes the dude want to party. Yeah. That's when I found techno. Yeah. And uh, uh, like, yeah, almost, almost at the same time. Uh, uh, I, I don't know if you ever heard about uh, one of the famous clubs, Ebeck. No, I didn't know. I'm, I came in front. And it's one of the famous uh, 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 techno clubs we had in Berlin. And that's where I already been celebrating. And then, uh, like five years ago, uh, a friend of mine asked me to play, and I was like, no. And he kept asking me and asking me. So, I think two and a half years ago, it's what, it was his birthday, and he was like, yo, I'm having a small party in this small club. A lot of good techno DJs are coming. I want you to play an hour. It's like, yo, but I don't have no tracks, man. It's just the shit that I got on my laptop that I like to listen to. Yeah, I don't care. Play one hour just for me, birthday present. Like, okay, I play. I didn't play one hour. I played four hours. All them badass techno DJs, club owners, were all there. They were like, what the fuck you playing? Damn, that's insane what you playing. I was like, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> like, Ooh, thanks, you know, blah. Yeah, can we book you? I was like, oh, no, now I'm, I'm a hip-hop DJ. No, I can't te play no techno now. No, 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 play weekend, next weekend. Okay, so I played weekend. On the weekend, there was a, the, um, the light man I told somebody from the Zissi Post that I was rocking the weekend. So that's how I came to the Sissy Post, that I came to Chalet, the, the Butzke, Kata, and it was just like, bam, 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 bam. And then Ive, I know Ive was yeah. a pretty good um, uh, a producer. Yeah. And I asked him if he would be interest, interested in producing techno, G-House. Yeah. He was like, yeah, let's try it. And the same thing with rapping, just try it. Try it, and now we got about 20 tracks. You can, you can tell the difference from the first track to now, like the latest one we've done. And, and for me, insane improvement of, of hype. Yeah. Because I, I, I was not there with all the tracks. I think from them 20, I probably was sitting right next to him, 10 of them. Yeah. So he had to make his own skill in de development. Yeah, and it's, it's going on. People are interested. We're playing the songs. We play the songs when we play like for John They Vader. dope. They dope. I heard some of them. They dope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, man. Thanks, man. <laughs> Uh, we play the shit when we are uh, at John Reed, they put it online, we get our uh, sound club, nice comments. Uh, yeah, it's good. And then now, we take that back to like, fashion-wise, like obviously, like we know from DJ, when you're in the clubs, especially if you're in a techno club versus a hip-hop club, in most cities, and even here, sometimes the fashion is a little bit different. Like, on, on a whole, like you'll see people kind of rock the same gear both ways. But say for you, who's traveled through all these different music styles, they're natural to you when you go back and forth. Does, does, does your style ever switch up? Like, you wearing these crazy kicks right now. Would you be like, but yo, I got my set at Kata later, I'm taking them off or whatever, or it doesn't matter to you, it's really about you? Or does it get influenced by the music sometimes? I can tell you, at the time when they had the, the Jeezy's too, mm -hmm. remember the black one with the neon? Uh, yeah. I think I wore them a whole day at uh, Fashion Week 
And I went been to the fucked up clubs, <laughs> the same shoe. And I remember I was sitting like this in the club. They all fucked up because <laughs> there was like the pipeline broke. So there was all water and muddy and shit, piss and everything. And I was walking through them motherfuckers. I was not walking on top of the water. I was walking through that. And there was this one sneakerhead saw me sitting there with all this mud on them. Jesus. Like, oh my God! What you doing? Them shoes! Ah. I shut the fuck up. And I took my cigarette and I was like this. It's just shoes. Yeah. For me, it's just shoes. Yeah. If I like them, I wear them. I don't care if there's only 50 pair of them. Yeah. I, did. I don't get shoes to put them in a box and save them and put, I don't know what to call it, uh, um, like put the air out. Yeah. The vacuum. Is it back, not, yeah, the vacuum bag. Fuck that, 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 yeah. that shit. <laughs> I mean, if you're a sneaker collector, okay. But if I'm buying shoes or I'm getting shoes, I wear them. Yeah. If I wear them and I want to wear them tonight, and I'm going actually after this, I'm going to a techno club yeah. later on. You know, I mean, Edge is here. Yeah. Uh, Are you going to go buttoned up like that? The buttoned up shirt? Yeah, yeah. First, yeah, but I'm, I'm not getting naked, but I'm taking the shirt off. All right, all right. <laughs> it's probably getting hot. And then after that, I'll probably go with him to the Kata. Yeah. And we all know how Kata looks. I mean, you can wear, walk there barefooted, but your shoes would be pretty fucked up if you go on the dance floor. Yeah. So, I don't care. Like, yeah. I'm not going to go home now and get dressed for chalet and then go home and get dressed for Kata. Yeah. No. I'll go there where I'm at and the way I am. That's what's up. That's what's up. Hey, yo, everybody listening, however you listening, send some vibes out to the homie Harris. Yo, thank you for being here, my G. Thank you. All right. Cool. Tie, tie, tie. Tie, tie, tie. All right, check, check, one, two. Here we are at Swim Good Radio. I'm chilling here with my man Marvin Game. Shouts out to I-75 from Mushi Kreuzberg yelling at us in the background. What up? Um, so, yo, we had the Revot Modern versus Classic, and those are the kind of things I want to talk to you about. Um, is Modern versus Classic. So, when it comes to music, right, like, obviously I like your music. I've been supporting you for a minute, and I've seen you in a... I appreciate it. Right? And I've seen you in different spheres. I've seen you, like, with the YouTube hard rap vibes. I've seen you doing nice records. I've seen you in live instrumentation when I listen to all your projects. And I hear a lot of different influences. So, when it comes to music, how do you draw from modern and classic? I think it's... The, the classic part is the music I grew up with, probably more the music that I listened to, that my parents listened to, like doo-wops, or my, my father used to listen to a lot of Elvis or Beatles. I don't, I don't know if that's really an influence, an active influence, but unconscious, I, I'd say that. And I don't know, nowadays I, try, I actually try to, to not listen to too much new music, or like re, not repetitively listen to it. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get, get away from the. Uh, I'm sorry. No, it's all right. To give him his shoes. Thanks all for right. the shoes so much, man. I appreciate getting these shoes right now. So you just got some classics. There you go. Yeah. On cue. <laughs> Thank you so much, Reebok, man. Um, no, I actually try to not listen to too much new music all the time, or not listen to the songs over and over again, yeah. because I want to stay away from the modern influences. Yeah. Like I, I like, I like a lot of especially all the new R&B and trap kind of stuff, but I, it's more what I like to when I go out, I, I, what I like to listen to when I go out or something. It's not really what I bump. I just li- I listen to a lot of R&B and soul music. Nice. That's maybe maybe listening to those songs is giving me those melodies and shit, and then okay. my brother and his beats are just giving me the, yeah. what you say, like the ground, yeah. the, the, the basics. I hear that, so. though. I hear them soulful vibes and a lot of, yeah. like, your... Uh, the hook production and the harmonies and melodies you choose. I'd say my biggest influence is my brother, and he's he's really into all the music. He like he like. I ask him about yo, you heard about this new guy, and he's like, boop, <laughs> and like this is Pink Floyd album on on. This. <laughs> you know, like, more like that. That's what's up. But and then um, now with when we now music, I heard actually from D Rush, who's, who's, who's got us on camera right now, that you're very particular about your music and your videos, like like you, you got the DIY vibes which you're very particular. So when we leave music and get to clothing and fashion, are you particular as well? I'm particular with that I will only wear what I like. Yeah. I, 
if I wouldn't like the Reebok Classics that I just gave me, I wouldn't wear them. But yeah. I look at them, I like them, obviously, and then I would wear them. But there has been times where people try to sponsor me or give me stuff, and then I just wouldn't want to wear it. I'm not the particular guy who stands in front of the mirror for hours and is like, oh, does this jeans match the socks? And, but I do try to look good, yeah. but I just throw on what I like. And fashion-wise, what would you say, modern or classic? Like, if you go in fashion, Bob. Like. I'd say more modern. Yeah. I don't really know too much about classic fashion, so I couldn't say that. I like I like the old, like, 50s and 60s American, but it's not really the way I would dress. I, yeah, just, yeah, I just like the... You can yeah, rock that, because you got the cut well, for it. But that's, that's, more, well, that's more 60s, 70s, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little yeah. later. But, yeah. And speaking of the States, I found out from, from uh, reading up about you, that you went there to study music and catch a vibe for a little while. Where did you go when you lived in the States? I was there for for like five months, and okay. it was, I was traveling. Most of the time I was in San Diego and L.A., though. Ah, best I, weather on the planet, oh San yeah. Diego. Wow, I love that. <laughs> San Diego is so beautiful, and I got so many good friends there. It's just... It's amazing there. I just, I, I had no plan when I went over there. I just always told myself that when I'm done with school and I have free time, I'm just going to go over there because I had this one friend yeah. who always told me, hey, bro, you can stay in my house. So yeah. I, I did that, and then I just stayed there. And from there, I just hustled myself from one studio to another, told everybody, hey, introduce me to every person you know that has to do with music. Yeah. And from the backyard freestylers to any universal a and I sat down with everybody and just... Try to try to get myself out there. Try to get my brother's beats out there. I was doing music videos back then for other people, so I, I used that to connect as well. It was an amazing time, but really it had a big, big ass influence on me. How they view music, how they view the the whole culture, the whole hip hop thing. How everybody raps and everybody yeah. freestyles. Yeah. And it's, it comes from somewhere, and it's not the not such a. I mean, Berlin is really. Um, how would you say it? A lot of people from, from the States, or, or especially from New York, compare Berlin to, to New York, mm -hmm. like maybe in the 90s or something, because there is something going on now. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's been only there for a few, uh, for, for a few years, is how I feel. Mm -hmm. Maybe because I'm younger and I didn't get the, get the old influences from back in the 90s, but to me, looking at it in, in America, uh, it made me understand more where it came from in Berlin now as well, mm -hmm. and where, where the, the old hats had it from. Back back then it was it was actually fun to me. Like I was the whole hip hop culture thing, the four elements and everything. I could never like really get that to me. It was okay, yeah, you break dance, okay, bro, yeah, you DJ. <laughs> it's cool. There's techno DJs as well. You know, that was like my my kind of my, my point of view. But as uh, as soon as I got in touch with it, I I love that shit. And I feel you. I feel you. So then. Um, What's up next for you? Like, like, what's coming up next? Is it, what's what's in the what's in the pipeline? Dropping my second album, October sixth. Okay, coming up soon. Yeah, man. I, coming up soon. It took me it took me like four years or three or four years to put out my first album. Yeah. And I didn't want to take that long again. And I had so many songs ready, so many ideas, and just put it together to do another album. All right. It's called 2015. 2015 coming up soon. I'm looking forward to bumping that. Yeah, All right, yo. Well, yo, um, everybody listening, however you listening, send some love through whatever means that is to the homie Marvin Gave. Love and harmony to everybody out there. Stay healthy. All right. See, see y'all. Check. One, two, one, two, one, two. I let the tag on. It's, yeah. This, this is swag. Swag. Yeah. Swag, swag. Hey, yo, what up, everybody? This is Stimulus coming to you live from the Reeboks Classics booth at Bread and Butter 2017. Special guests in the house, the homie Seto, the one and only, yeah, the yeah, homie yeah. Wood. Yeah, yeah, Say yeah. what's up to the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Single baby, the rain man, live from Bread and Butter. So, this is your first Bread and Butter and you already outfitted in the fancy classics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reebok for life, baby. All right. Fresh new white sneakers. And it's also my first interview in English. Okay. So double premiere. Okay, double premiere. So we do it something new, something old. So when it comes to sneakers yeah. or, and clothes in general, yeah. do you like modern stuff, like new school vibes, or you like classic vibes? 
I heavily fuck with Reebok Classics because yeah. back in the days I'm from Schöneberg yeah. and this was the thing. It was like a uniform. You, yeah. you just have to wear black Reebok Classics. Um, but when it comes up to clothes, I'm I'm not I'm not stick to only the new shit. Okay. But also also this whole retro stuff is is in trend right now. So yeah. yeah. And then so from that, like a lot of people say, like. Um, a lot of clothes or fashion styles kind of go along with music, right? Like, so you a hip hop sure. artist, yeah. so a lot of people might say, "Hey, you a hip hop artist, so you got the hip hop style," or maybe they think you don't. Like, what do you think about styles that go with like music genres? Like, do you I, have a preference? You I, like hip hop style or something? Like I think the hip hop style is the most important style for the whole fashion world because. The rappers today are the new rock stars, yeah. and and they are the people with the most influence. And look what what Kanye did to the fashion world. Yeah. He just crushed it and bash it, and everybody, for example, all the new freshmen in America, like Lil Uzi or, or uh, 21 Savage, they they creating new styles. Yeah. For example, Migos. Yeah. They just came up with crazy shit, and everybody tries to copy. So yeah, hip hop style for life. Okay. Now when it comes to uh, to the music. Yeah. Where do you go there? Are you like more like into like the newest thing you can find or are you into like classic old school vibes or a little mix? I'm currently listening to the whole new stuff and I love what happens because I think we are in a time where things are changing so fast and uh, things are getting very interested, interesting and so open and the community is so big and there are so much stuff but you can't deny the old school yeah uh, it's you you can you can never forget a krs1 or you can never forget a park or, or biggie so but but i'm i'm trapping <laughs> i'm trapping in the moment i feel you and uh you go by uh the one and only and like um when you made your album why did you choose to have um so many English titles to your songs, uh, is it because it fit the concepts best or? Um, to me, my language is like a weapon. Okay. And when I say I won't use English language or French language, then I won't, then I would have not enough ammo. Yeah. So I pick from every language. When it fits, it fits. When I can some, say something better in English and it's yeah. more on point, then I will use it. Yeah. You know? So. I feel you, I feel you. And do you do the same with clothes? Like, do you pick and choose whatever fits you the most? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it has to look nice. For example, this jacket I stole it from my father. I don't even know uh, which brand it is, but, <laughs> but, but I liked it. I took it from his uh, uh, from his uh, closet, and it's nice. Yo, that's swag. No, no, that's no, tag no, swag. This, this is swag. It's it's tag swag. <laughs> so, yo, we're here with Seto. Uh, wherever you're listening, however you're listening, I want you to send some, some warm vibes out to the homie for coming out and sitting with us and checking out the booth. Please say goodbye to the people. Goodbye, people. <laughs> Peace. It's Swim Good Radio. Yeah. Radio. Hey, yo, what up, everybody? Here live for Swim Good Radio with Reebok Classics at Bread and Butter. We have a very, very, very special guest, our first non-music making guest. <laughs> but it's gonna be super interesting. I'm excited for this. Everybody say what's up to my homie Joy. What up, Stim? Ooh. Thanks for having me, my man. Yeah, so Select Berlin, I'm co-owner. Uh, we, we, we are in an agency um, and we do selection, which is our team decides for nightclubs and events who's getting in and who has to stay outside. So that's basically what we do. Uh, other than that, we're an event agency. We do hosting. We do um, also crowd control for festivals and stuff like that. So we are pretty close to the music industry and also to the fashion industry because, you know, whenever something's going on culturally in Berlin, there's always events and we are involved in many of them. And that's why you're here, baby. Who better to answer these questions than someone like yourself? So we're here at Reebok, which does a lot of things that are like both modern and classic. And so you being like a gatekeeper to a lot of the music scenes True. here in Berlin, um, you get to observe modern and classic fashion on a daily, weekly basis. Yeah, and you also definitely. get to get to like see what kind of fashions go with different kind of music. So I want to start with the music first with you because we've had some interesting conversations about how closely certain styles are related to certain musics. 
Now you as someone who works the door at everything from live music to hip hop to techno, do you feel like you see certain styles depending on what kind of music is is in the party that, that you're like doing a door for, your staff is doing a door for? There definitely are still differences, although the major thing is that styles are actually actually mixing up, whereas when, uh, when I was coming up, it was clear that when you went to a hip-hop party, you were, you know, wearing baggy pants and sneakers and, I don't know, and hoodies, and that, that, that was that. And nowadays, whether you go to an electronic party or whether you go to a hip-hop party or to a live concert, it's funny that styles are really, especially in Berlin, styles are really mixing up. And, for example, you, you notice that at hip-hop parties, a lot of cats are wearing t uh, slim jeans now, yeah. or a lot of cats are wearing Doc Martens now as well. Yeah. And yeah, there are still differences, but but especially in Berlin, styles are mixing. Okay, is there anything like in any of the scenes that that still to this day you would say, hey, this style you still mostly or usually would only see here, whether that's in the techno house, hip hop world, or anything. You know what's interesting? I I can I, I make the difference with shoes. You can see it from a shoe perspective. Okay. When you think about, for example, basketball shoes, it's definitely a hip hop thing. Okay. Doc Martens, for example, is more of a rock thing still. Yeah. Well, 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 and 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 or techno thing. Okay. And when you have the you have the the the. The formal dress shoes, that's more of a, what we call champagne club thing, which is more happening in the West. Okay. So, and, and for girls, you know, the high heels thing is nothing that you do at a techno party or at a hip-hop party. Well, hip-hop parties, some do, yeah. But uh, more at a champagne party, you know, where there's bottle service and all that. Yeah, that's what's up. And now also, you know, as the gatekeeper, you know, you're always reading people's vibes trying to make sure to assess, like, do they fit, yeah. you good know, point. the kind of scene I'm trying yeah. to curate right point. now. good point. And when that happens, how many cues do you take from what they're wearing? It's an overall feeling. The thing is, you 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 said it very, very right. I don't want to. I, w I don't want my guests to be dressed up. I want them to dress comfortably, like have their 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 style reflect their personality. But I can tell if somebody is wearing a costume, if it's not really him him or herself, or whether he just you know tries to be somebody that night that he really isn't. And that's something very subtle. You can you have some cues. For example, if somebody's wearing a suit, if that suit doesn't fit them, you can tell. Um, if, for example, there's a difference between, between just uh, tennis shoes and sneakers. Yeah. You know, there's a difference between, I don't know, between um, a fitted hat and, uh, and a snapback, and it really doesn't go with, you know, the other stuff that he's trying to do, or, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, there are differences, but wh whatever you wear, you, you I have to believe that you are not wearing a costume, that's it. I feel you. Yeah. Now you particularly have a really good style and it's like, and it's diverse. Yeah. Now, but if you were talking about your own style, would you say you lean more modern or more classic? Mm -hmm. Um, the thing is, you, you, again, you said it, my diversity is what my definition of my own style is, that I really try not to have any boundaries. I do have a really big shoe collection. I have my bespoke suits. I have my, of course, my slim jeans, my baggy jeans, everything. Um, I have a lot of street streetwear. I have everything, really. And in a, in, in, in a certain way, there's also right now a classic streetwear style. Yeah. So even within the different styles, there's a classic way to rock it and a modern way to rock it, avant-garde, etc., etc. So. You cannot just separate, you know, classic and formal, but even within the styles, you again have certain nuance, nuances. So, and within that, I always try to rock my stuff rather classic. Okay, yeah. I feel you, I feel you. So, yo, wherever you are, however you're listening, I want you to send some thankful and warm vibes back to Joy for sitting here with us. Please say peace to the people. Peace out, yo. This is Joy representing Select Berlin. Peace out to you. Much love. I'm definitely going to see you at one of our doors. Peace. Oh, that's for sure. Later. Later. We had Swim Good Radio uh, coming to you live from Bread and Butter, you know, and team, the team from the awesome agency just came through. Kush Jones, Bass Bear, DJ Swisher just came through, and um, we just suited these guys up with some, some fly Reebok 
uh, uh, I don't even know what you call these pouch bags, but anyway, we was asking your homie Sentai about it, like, what does he think about the pouch bag? And I had a very different thought about it because I'm from New York. So let's start with LA like we did last time. Like, is this something you saw growing up in LA or what scene is this from? Or what do you think about these pouch bags in general? Honestly, I never saw them anywhere, like, until recent. Like, I feel like people, like, honestly, from my vision, I feel like I've seen them more, like, in, like, the UK, in, like, London, like, where people are, like, DJing just, like, with the pouch on, like, doing their thing all into it. But I feel like now, like, I've been seeing it everywhere. But I'm down. I'm aware I'm of being one of those dudes. I gotta start DJing grime. All right, so you down. So, so Swish is down. Kush Joes, Kush Joes. So, have you seen, did you see these in the Bronx? Like, what, what, how, what's your feel on these things? Alright, so the closest thing I've seen was like a, a fanny pack, but um, clearly like this one is different. I had one as a kid growing up, but if you had one, like people would try to play you, they'd be like, nah, that's corny. But then as you got older, it's like a utility. It's like you could do extra things with it. Only thing it's missing is like if you had an extra pocket on the inside, because like, you know, you growing up, you get adult items. So you had like a nice pocket to put the adult items in, a little concealment, but um, it's dope. Like, Thank you. So without planning, New York back me up. So now we, we keep it in New York. We go over the base van. What, what's, your, what's your feel on, on the pouch bags and, and what did you see when you was coming up versus now? First off, there's only three types of people that had these sexy pouch bags. <laughs> Type one. People over 30 that fucking ball in the court. You feel me? All they do is dunk, all they do is shoot threes. Second ones, shout out all my Dominicans right now on 2 and 4th and Broadway. You know what I'm saying? Playing dominoes, they got the pouch ready with the fucking little, little Hennessy, whatever. You know what I'm saying? And last but not least, yo, shout out to all my hustlers with the trap packs. You already know you need this shit. I see y'all motherfuckers, you feel me? Deuces. <laughs> Got your motto for the bag. So like he said, uh, shout out everybody with the packs. This the pack for the pack. So you hold your, you know, I can't, I don't know if we allowed to say on the air, but yeah, whatever's. Oh yeah, all right, so the, the marijuana, like it's the pack for the pack. So it's, all we need is that extra pocket though, unless you want, you know, you fight jump off, you put a little blade in the back. But. That's how you know some real New Yorkers when you meet them. Because everything is in perfect context and detail. And when it comes to fashion, it always got to be useful. Utilitarian. We don't wear stuff just to flex for no reason. Okay. Anyway. Now, to the music. Now, I'm lucky y'all three. I've all heard, like, different bits of your music. And now what I want to ask you about music is, like, since we had Reebok where they do modern and they do classic, Right. And I've heard a little of y'all music. I heard a little bit from Kush and Switch. I've heard a full bass band set before, and I've already been on your SoundCloud. So I know you guys know, like, Remix Game. I know y'all got, like, all kinds of things So behind the scenes. So, so can you talk to me about your balance between modern music and classic music in terms of how it influences you and how you use it in your production? So... The classic to me is what I grew up with. So I grew up listening to Mad Dipset and shit like that. So, and I feel like I've recently I've been channeling back because I make a lot of rap beats. I make a lot of dance beats publicly, but I really make a lot of rap beats. So the number one producer I channel is The Alchemist. And The Alchemist, he has the sickest beats of all time. You know what I mean? Put Prodigy on him, you know what I'm saying? Rest in peace, Prodigy, keep it thorough, you feel me? But I'll watch an Alchemist video and make like five beats dedicated to this dude, you know, because that's the guy that, uh, that I, I go for. But you know, but be, I just modernize it now, you know what I'm saying? I'll take, I'll take, it's like I'll take his beat and just add some 808 on it and shit just slap. And nowadays, compa- like the new, the new New York rappers, the new New York sound, you know what I'm saying? They still preserving that shit with just more 808. And because my name Bass Bay, I'm trying to put that on the map. I feel you. What up, Switch? Uh, that's a hard question because I'm into so many different things, but honestly, I, like, I don't have any like deep-rooted LA like classic inspiration. I'm like, I'm originally from Philadelphia, but I lived in LA pretty much my whole life. But for the music that I make, like club music and footwork, like I really relate to classic house music because it, like it was a foundation for all that to happen. And it's just like crazy, like trace the steps of like the cities 
and all that and how it like got to like different regions and how they've made their own sound but yeah like i really like listen to old stuff like old baltimore club the most just because it's like so simple and inspiring and then i'll make something that's just like really simple and then i'll like take it to a new level but also i'm like i grew up with like a lot of my dad was like a punk musician he still is and like grew up with a lot of reggae and stuff like that and like i'll just listen to all like just like through my whole life of no sounds and like identified them like i knew what they were i wasn't just like force fed music kind of just like i grew up with it so i always just like like i listen to music more than i make it for sure I like djing more than producing so like i really just like to listen to everything and i let it all just soak in and it'll just somehow end up being inspirational <laughs> i feel you what up kush so in terms of that like at least from new york um sampling is very important so like um I always, I always appreciate like a good sample. Like first thing I remember, like I went to go and try to find a record was um, the Whose World Is This uh, with Nas on Illmatic, and it's a Mod Jamal. It's like a little snippet um, of keys that he played. But I always, I always think it makes sense. Where as a DJ or producer, you you always tie it back to something that people can understand, but in the realm of what you're doing. So. Uh, like hip hop, uh, you had like Boom Bap, um, Atlanta, they went and they had like the 808 sound, like that was their thing. But um, like the flow or like rapping on a verse, like that always tied, that's the one thing with like hip hop may, may be or, um, but yeah, everything, if you're trying to like show someone something different, you always tie it back to what could be familiar. So um, if there's like the house music has the four to the floor kick, like there's certain conventions and um, different sounds, but if you take like a four to the floor kick and you put vocals over it, um, that's house music. You change the kick pattern up. You have Jersey Club, so it's interesting. Um, um, like my bad. Uh, now I'm saying like music is dynamic. So, so now one thing, another thing, like you hit on this switch when you talking about like where you from in LA and like all the different um, influences, how different music scenes you listen to. And I know all of y'all do, but especially in my New Yorkers, because that's the same for us, you know? And so now when we go back to like the fashion side of things, a lot of people try to or, or associate certain styles with certain genres of music. Um, and when that happens, like it, saying that's true, is there a genre of music that has a style attached to it that you like, yo, I'm extra into that. That always influenced me, and like, and like, that's my vibe. I say like every era had a style. So whether it be the '50s and '60s, you had zoot suits, and it was like loud, and it was like a big, it was colorful, like real big suit. Uh, '70s, you had flower shirts with the belt bottom. '80s, you had like uh, jumpsuits. '90s, you had the jumpsuits but baggy jeans, and like it evolves and changes like every era um with hip-hop there's like pro Keds, um new balance clarks uh like wallabies like this there's, there's mad options and um there's always a certain figure like for me um coolest person in terms of style with music was a uh, ghost face killer uh, and he was the only one like a robe with like the eagle his chains his jewelry bracelet <laughs> But like um he like he'll go to a show or like he'll go to the club with like a full robe and the Clarks or the Wallies uh and he would get custom made pairs and like he'll just rock his jewelry with the eagle and it was loud. So it, I don't know, it like take like the fifties and sixties you just had to be loud dressed, dancing, like flashy. But it translates to his era and like even now, um I know they got the small bag, like it's how much your bag costs. So but yeah, um it transitions like always. Yo, I mean, it's like a timeline. I grew up just on my wearing Tims and triple XLTs, literally listening to Dipset. Like, I listened to so much gangster rap growing up that all I want to do is, is just dress like a gangster rapper. You know what I mean? But growing up, my music changed and shit. Like, started listening to electronic music, whatever. Like, I don't know. I think that was like, I, I was just wearing more like militant style clothing and, and shit like that. And then, 
and then the whole ASAP Rocky wave came in, and that shit just, it just, like, modernized the New York style, you know what I mean? It's like, you can still be baggy, but you can still be fitted, you know what I mean? And then it just, it actually just opened, it actually just opened doors for everything that I thought was whack growing up, it's, like, more cool now. Like, you know what I mean? I, I never thought I would wear Reeboks, but I'm wearing Reeboks right now, 2.0s, you feel me? Like, it's just, it's, it's like, and these are, like, most comfortable shoe ever, you know what I'm saying? And nowadays, because bringing back the Alchemist, listening to rap beats, I'm wearing a bandana now. It's gonna be my shit for the next few, like, few months. Bandana gang, shout out. I don't know, that question's really funny to me because my mom's a fashion stylist, and growing up, she did a lot of, like, 90s rap, like, late 90s, early 2000s, like, I remember as a kid, I was in like that one TLC song for like the Rugrats Go to Paris movie. Like that one scene was like a bunch of kids like in a crowd, like a sea of kids. I was like, I was just always around. Like I would go to her sets with her, and like that whole like just like the 90s or 2000s, early 2000s. That whole style is like super impactful for me. Like I was really into that music, and like for like now I like DJ a lot of 90s stuff, and personally just listening to it day to day. But it doesn't play as much of like a role in my music production, but my DJ sets and my production are completely different. So I started off as a DJ and got to producing. But yeah, like mainly just like 90s, like like all the R&B, rap, like I just too many people to name. But it's literally like mom like worried. Like I think the craziest thing was like my mom uh, helped on the, the overnight celebrity with like Twista. Yeah, he Twista's on that, right? Jamie Foxx, like she styled that and shit, and like. I just like made an impact on me, I remember, because I was like kind of old enough to like make choices on like what I wanted to wear. I wasn't just getting like dressed, but now it's funny because my mom, like, she literally gave me like, she gave me like five like rare ass like old Carl uh, Kanai hats, like that are like super old, like they're literally like they look fake. They're so old, because like now he has all this new like his new line. But yeah, like like my mom always does a roast me, like I wear Fubu and shit, and like it's really big like like clothes and it's just like. So, yeah, the FUBU thing, that tripped me out when I first moved to Germany and I went to the store and they was literally still selling like brand new FUBU that had just come out in 2012 and Wu wear. And I was tripping. But what I wanted to ask you guys is like, I hear that a lot of you guys were listening to hip hop coming up and, you know, at some point in your career, your production style and music style brought you into like what a lot of people consider like, you know, subculture, you know, dance music. Now we know like where footwork and you come from, you know, it's probably the same fashion, but when you guys are on the road or in different cities, are you ever hit where like your fans of this subculture might have like a different style of vibe than like, you know, like like you, you saying, I came up listening to Dipset, I'm coming through wearing a bandana. Are your fans at like X Club who came to see a footwork show like on the bandana or they look completely different? I feel like for like, I'm not gonna really say I have fans only because it's like everyone that really support me are people that I have real relationships with. So it's easy, it's easy for them to like, because it's like they know me already. So it's easy for them to see me and be like, yo, Ray got a bandana, he's channeling his inner jewels right now. And it's like, you know, until they ask the question, I'm like, yeah, I'm actually channeling my inner jewels, you feel me? And that's just been like that for like most of my fa most of my fashion and stuff like that. People kind of really grasp. I'm a vocal person, so people kind of really grasp like my context and where I'm coming from. And sometimes it's funny to them. Like they be like, it's like they get it and I see them and be like, yeah, get it, boy. So yo, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, however you listen to this episode, I want you to send some warmth, vibes, and love to DJ Swisher, Chris Jones, and Bass Bear for being here. And uh, please say peace to the people, fellas. Yo, bless. <laughs> peace out, yo. You heard? <laughs> All right, we out. Peace, everybody. We are live. Swim Good Radio coming to you from Bread and Butter with Reeboks Classics. This is really cool, because the homie Shimmy just pulled up on me, and I wanted him to be here anyway, and he's a Swim Good alum. Probably one of the first people to do the Swim Good event before he does the Swim Good radio show, so we're excited to have him. Say what's up to the people. Shout out, Swim Good. Love it. Um, so, yo, I, I, I got to know you um, through the Sheep and Fisher gang. Yeah. And, and like you guys' music and through your sets at uh, Swim Good. So when it comes to 
your musical style and your musical influences. How, what's the balance between like modern influences and classic influences when it comes to music? That's a tough one, but because I grew up with rap music since I was like 14, I listened to rap music straight. And luckily, hip hop changed so much during the last like 20 years yeah. that it always got me at, at every point. There yeah. wasn't any time where I was like, oh, I can't really like feel it. So like me and hip hop, we grew up together. Okay. And so like through the whole like impact from other genres like electro or or indie or whatever it was always like my my thing at that point because like i i always was into the influences that came through like r&b or whatever yeah. so this was also my style so i hadn't like i hadn't i wasn't necessarily like had to 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 change anything i just had to stick to to what i always liked okay that's it, simple as that. And now, what about on the fashion tip? Because you say, you know, like, when we're 14, you know, everyone starts trying to flex when they're 14, you know, you get, you're starting to feel like you're a teenager for real, you get ready to go to high school. Because you say that the music influenced your fashion sense at that age, or? Definitely, okay. definitely. I, I, I wanted to look like the, the rappers I saw um, on MTV because like at that point like they just played rap music night in the night. Yeah. So and that led to the point that like not too many people in Germany at this time were like they they were not into hip hop fashion because they never saw it before. And so I was standing out when I went like in my in my school I was the first guy who wore baggy pants. Okay. Like when I when I had my first girlfriend, yeah. uh, she was like, she told her her friends like, oh, I'm now like together with this guy who always wears baggy pants, and they knew me out of, <laughs> out of a thousand people of my school. They knew that it was me because I was wearing like, and back we had this echo wear, yeah. and these like bomber jackets, like this uh, NFL or. Uh, NBA bomber jackets and the hats and now it's the same like when I when I see the people walking around here it could be so me like back in the days because yeah. they're wearing the same brands the same style it, oh, it comes back as always in fashion that's dope that's really dope and so what about now like now that there's all this throwback stuff are you getting into the throwback stuff that you used to see back in high school or college or are you keeping it more modern nowadays? I, I try to keep it a bit more modern because like I'm I'm 30 plus now and I don't want to look like a teenager. <laughs> I, I respect that and I love the way that, oh, that uh, the teenagers nowadays, they want to flex as well. I, I, I feel where it comes from but it's not like too much my my cup of tea nowadays like maybe with sneakers yeah. but not with the whole outfit i try to keep it a bit more low-key okay. like okay and then like obviously you listen to a lot of different music styles or whatever yeah are there any other music styles that have a fashion element that have influenced you like i was just sitting down with joy from select you know who does the door at like every club we ever play at here yeah and he was talking about well like yo if someone's wearing doc martens you know, he said the shoe game gives it away. He said up top, people wear everything. But yeah. he's like, if they're wearing Doc Martens, they're more on this side. If yeah. she's wearing high heels, it's more that side. Like, is there anything from other music scenes that, that you kind of rock that are not necessarily quote-unquote hip-hop style? Or yeah, that? definitely. Like, uh, I think, like, at one point, definitely, like, punk rock and hardcore because this is also like a subculture that I grew up with and I love this DIY culture yeah. and this like custom thing really yeah. because like nowadays it's so easy to to look cool but to like create something that is really unique yeah. you still need to put in work and yeah. I love to see that people put in work in their outfit that yeah. they custom their bands or that they print their own shirts or they even cut their own shirts this is something that I really like but I also like the simplicity of like techno and electronic music yeah. be that you like because like everybody can wear a white t-shirt and a like crispy leather jacket or whatever but you see the difference in like in the quality and not in the branding yeah. you know you have the same product it's quality shape it's that whole norm, yeah. norm core yeah. thing yeah yeah, yeah. and I, 
I'm, I wouldn't call that norm core, yeah. but like a crisp white shirt yeah. with a pair of cool jeans yeah. is the best outfit as long as you can see that the that the quality of the, the products that you're wearing are better than like fucking whatever yeah. Primark or yeah. whatever, you know yeah. what I mean? And then on that level, what's up with you? Are we ever gonna see like a hand cut shimmy punk rock? Custom made shirt. Or I, I, I wear I wear quite a lot of custom <laughs> shit because I I have my own like textile print company. Okay. Dope. So sometimes I just buy like cool basics like a shirt or whatever, and then I print like my own designs or like my favorite album cover or whatever. I just did a a military jacket that I printed all over with like classic jazz covers because I'm wow. I'm into like. 50s, 60s jazz, right. and so I did like a whole like all over print kind of thing out of it. That's dope. Yeah, That's and I dope. and this is something that like that is not like too too regular. So yo, wherever you are, however you're listening to this episode of Swim Good Radio, please send some love and energy to the homie Shimmy. And Shimmy, please say peace to the people. Peace, people. Check one two, check one two. Yo, here we go. Swim Good Radio. Really excited for this interview. First time I'm having three people on the mic at the same time. Um, three really dope artists um, that are here with us today. I'm going to just start from left to right. On my left, Kelvin Colt. Bruh, bruh. <laughs> Il Bar Spitter, I first saw on Colors, saw him yeah. rock live. He got that real energy. And what I like to also just add in, he got energy and he could deliver on the stage very important. Right next to him, the homie Mad Flows coming from the West Coast. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, JJ. Hi, guys. Flows got all that for y'all. A lot of y'all Berliners may know about him, and if you don't, you're gonna find out more. And then last but definitely not least, man, I've been trying to get on this show too for a minute, the <laughs> homie Shay Lingo. Yo, yo, trip, 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 trip. Representing London. So, yo, fellas, i like to thank you for being here. And actually, what I'm going to do, we're going we're gonna to top it up about some music. Mm. So earlier in this show, we all got to hear um, songs from each one of you, right? So I'm going to start with Shay, because Shay gave us the German world premiere. Mm -hmm. So can you, can you tell us the full name of the song and, and what it's all about, please? So the name of the song is Jigger from the Jump. Um, and... It's a song for your day ones. It's an anthem for your day ones. Like Black Girl Magic was my last single. That was the anthem for the women that made me who I am today. And this one's for me and my friends. A lot of my stuff is super lyrical, and I just wanted to give them. I wanted to give my friends something. I wanted. To, I wrote the song for my friends. Like if everybody else messes with it, they mess with it. But I wrote this one for my friends just so that we can turn up on the stage and, do you know what I'm saying, ride around in a car and just vibe and just really get excited about some music that we made. You know what I mean? Like it's. It's one for your friends, man. It's one for the ones that have been loyal. Like, even now, my boy's in the studio. Risky, shout him out every single time. Cause he's been my he's been my brethren for 13 years. You get me? And he's never given me a reason to question him. His mm -hmm. loyalty, his his compassion for what I'm doing, his support, none of that ever. Mm -hmm. Not once in, mm -hmm. in all of those years. Do you know what I mean? So this one's for him, his brother, Shy is another one of my best friends, you know what I mean? And every all of the man them back in the ends. Like it's just this is one for them, do you know what I mean? Just to celebrate your friends. Feel you. So Flows and Kelvin, I want y'all to chime in on that. Like how important for for you guys are, are your closest friends and the ones who are loyal to you and, and like what part does that play in you feeling comfortable as an artist or what part does it play in you making your music? Oh man. I mean like close friends and supporters are are people who can be honest with you. You know, you need someone to be able to bounce ideas off of. And if you don't have that, it's it's tough. So, um, I mean, I've been doing music for a bit and I've gone through some things with some close friends, unfortunately, that are no longer friends. And uh, that's always a tough loss, you know. That's something that happens and that's something that comes along with this music. When you try and incorporate people you really care about because you know they care about you, and then business starts getting involved, it doesn't always work hand in hand. But when you can find those people where you can do business, you know, you can trust their ideas and they're down to ride, vice versa. That's like, you can't really put a price on it. You know? It's invaluable. Amen. What about you, Kelvin? I mean, you, you, you're nodding your head like it's similar for you. Um, but as we talked about before, like, you move around a lot. Yeah. So, so do your close homies move with you or do you just have to stay in touch? 
It's a mixture. It depends on what the specific reason is why I go to somewhere. So, like, um, if we have shows, he's always there. Yeah. But then again, because he lives here in Berlin and I'm always on a move <laughs> between basically two continents. Yeah. Or sometimes just, you know, the island and the mainland. Yeah. And um, he has his own life. I have my own life. And that's how it goes for our whole, you know, collective. There are more day one people that we have, but you can't always just see and meet each other. And I mean, we're all sort of second generation or third generation, whatever. But it's like when my dad left Nigeria mm -hmm. to go live, live in the UK, go live in the States, go live in Germany. It's a similar thing. Like I see history repeating itself. But the power is, again, as we mentioned earlier with the Internet, we can stay in touch with each other. That's what's so, up. That's yeah. what's up. So, Flows, I want you to introduce to the people um, the song I played by you. I played your new your newest track uh, with Dope is Dope. Um, ah. shout, shout out to the homie Sarah, who's in the video. He, he was on the show earlier. earlier. Um, and so this is you kind of hooking up with some new homies, I guess. You making music here in Berlin. Tell, tell, us, tell everybody the name of the song and, and what it's all about. Okay. Uh, the track's called Stressful. And uh, really, it's just about, like, when you're trying to work on music, when you're trying to create, sometimes people bring in other energy into the situation. And it's, and it's, it's in conflict with what you're trying to create at the time. And so the song is kind of like trying to deal with that. Berlin's a really crazy city. It's easy to get caught up in stupid shit. It's easy to get swept away in what's ever happening. And so to be able to find, like, I call it an oasis. I need that musical oasis. I need that creative oasis in any city I'm at. And so this song is kind of like me proclaiming that kind of ideal. And uh, the dope is dope, uh, dope is dope, homies. Um, I met them through Leander from Dezebel. Like I met those Dezebel cats like way back in the day. Shout out Dezebel, shout out Leander, Bambos. And um, he connected me with a bunch of people like um, B Side, who I'm doing an album with, No Love Lost, um, with with Dope is Dope. And through that, I started doing shows out in vetting and shit, and like in different parts of the city. Through that. You know, met more people eventually ended up bumping into you. Mm -hmm. Rest is history. That's what's up. So, I like that vibe or that idea, like finding a place to find sanctuary. So, Shay, like, you know, you from back in ends in London, mm -hmm. and like you come over here now. But where's your sanctuary? Is your sanctuary like back home? Is it the studio? Does it move with you? Like, well, um, I got a studio in my house now. Mm -hmm. So, my home is my sanctuary. Like, I was always taught, I was, I was brought up by my mum and my grandma. Grandma first, um, from like the, the ages I can remember. And then my mum taught me the like, life lessons later on in my like, early teens, 16, 17, 18. So where, what I was always taught is to respect the place you lay your head. Do you know what I mean? And I've been working at music for a little bit as well, like coming on five years and just trying to build and grow and network and communicate. Because I feel like if you're a good artist, just quick digression, I feel like if you're a good artist, it's not necessarily about being the best at whatever your whatever your musical kind of facet is. It's about how well you communicate with the people. Do you know what I mean? Like you could, and like a singer could sing, sing one line and it just could connect with everybody in the world. And like a rapper, for example, could say a million things in a bar and nobody understands it but that rapper and his friends. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, um, I feel like where you lay your head is important because it helps you it helps you kind of keep yourself level and keep yourself balanced especially when you're trying to reset yourself i feel like there's a lot of emotional energy that's in the world and people try and take a lot from you especially when they feel like you're coming up and sometimes it's not bad everyone's just trying to eat you know what i mean but you need a place where you can go back to your oasis your sanctuary your haven whatever you want to call it where you can just kind of build that and i've been working for like five years on trying to build and trying to build myself into a space where I can have I've moved out of like my family home I've got my own place and like I'm able to just create and just be myself my friends come over and they're like this is this is the house of a rapper this is the house of an artist mm -hmm. do you know what I mean and that is one of the most validating feelings ever to just walk back into my I miss it right now do you mm -hmm. know what I mean like walk mm -hmm. back into my house and just be able to go okay take a deep breath light some incense drink some water stay hydrated drink some water and just create and just be myself, do you know what I mean? And I think that is some of the most important things that an artist can lose mm -hmm. when they start to grow mm -hmm. into that international kind of 
level of the industry where it, it's more than just you, your friends and your manager, do you know what I mean? And and I feel like it's very important to have that place and to protect that mm -hmm. place and to to be a, be a bit of a diva sometimes and say, okay, guys, you need to leave me alone now because mm -hmm. I need to just stay in this place, do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And only have people in there that respect and understand and they're able to, able to reflect the energy that you put into your art and you and you give to them. Where? So, yeah. Where? What about you, Calvin? Where, where, where's your sanctuary? Because you move around a lot like these two gentlemen yeah. next to you. It is um, my family. My family, definitely my family home. Um, but also, as I have very close friends, people like, you know, like Sugar Boy Wilson, who I consider my family. And, um, yeah, because as they say, as cliche as it sounds, but home is where the heart is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, your heart is where your people are. Because they're the embodiment of that. Yeah. So that's it for me. But I find peace in small things because I live a very, and I'm sure a lot of people do, and we all do because we all travel a lot. Um, we live a very irregular life. We can't just sign up to a gym because we don't know if we're going to be <laughs> there for, for you know two weeks or whatever. I used to have an apartment in London, a nice one, uh, in Old Street. and. At some point, I wasn't there for like two months in a row, and I was like, why am I paying rent in the most expensive city? <laughs> and I'm not even here, and I'm not going to do the whole Airbnb thing and whatnot. So, yeah, um, I find it in small rituals. I find it in, as you said, the way you said, you know, you, you light the incense, I, I drink tea. Mm. I have my little, yeah, I have my little um, sports, like, routine, like, simple workout stuff that I do just at home. Um, and that's it, yeah, listening to music and speaking with my loved ones. Mm -hmm. That really puts me at peace. Whenever I can speak to my mom, it's like, I'm good, I'm I charged. Mm. I feel you. And now, um, the song I played from you, Kelvin, um, Trader For You, can, can you introduce the, the song to everyone and, and tell everyone what it's about? So, Trader For You was like the first song I really, really put out with like a video that I was behind and uh, so like just the whole thing was I, I remember it was when I was living in London and I had like no dime I had absolutely no money and nobody really wanted to work with me and stuff and I just said okay fuck all of this chasing people uh, up for I don't know sessions or whatnot I'm just gonna do my own thing and one of my homies uh, Jumper who's here from Berlin um, he gave me the beat I, you know, touched it up a little bit when wanted some changes. I recorded myself in my in the small apartment that I had, um, mixed it myself, came over here a few weeks later, homie came through the studio as I had another session with Jumper and Hustle Hot, shout out Hustle Hot. He was like, you want to shoot a video? So yeah, we shot the video the same night. We just called up some friends and we're just hanging out, shot the video and put it out a few weeks later and um, really put me on a good platform like internationally was shared by like big blogs as well and but I mean forget all of the blogs the key thing is it all of a sudden connected with a very special audience an audience that people hadn't really in Germany identified that much and that was the really interesting thing now talking about the internet again somebody if it's meant for you you will find it or it will find you yep. mm -hmm. and that's just what it what it is I mean recently I played at the hype festival mm -hmm. And there were so many people that got super excited when they heard Trader For You. Because mind you, there's only two things people know of me, which is the Hoochie Colors thing and um, Trader For You. And I mainly performed, or I only perform songs basically that are not out apart from these two songs. So in a half an hour set, that's a lot of new material and people get really excited. But when they heard Trader For You, yeah, I'll try it for you. Like you had guys singing, and you, uh, we had girls rapping my hoochie verse, nice. and it's like going hard, crazy. It's, it's it's unbelievable, and that's why that's what I really love. It's just it's not just about creating great music that we all do, but it is finding other people who are just as weird as you are. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's yeah. like that, that is the dopest yeah. like. You know what's funny? Even sitting like standing back and listening to you speak. Yeah. See how you said you got your, that whole routine. Your team. It's very similar to yeah, you're, we're very alike. Yeah, you're very, very alike. alike, and that's and why we're all stuff. sitting it's here. True, it's Even true. how you articulate yourself, it's true. Even how we met is mad. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's crazy. Like I met, I met Beige out. Like I met you out. Like I was out yeah. on a in night, the world. In the world. <laughs> just in the world. Yeah. <laughs> like, mad flows 
out on a night and it was just like yeah. yo and it was like yo and we had no idea <laughs> and then we started like having mutual like the, the convo went from whatever to like so what'd you do and it's like it became mutual and then we was talking about like little sims shout out little sims yeah. and and it was like oh yeah like the homie blah 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 blah, blah. and then it was like yeah now nah, follow me and then we follow each other it was like no nah, you're dope next time blah 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 and then it just randomly like i got i got hit up for virtual love and then i saw kelvin and then i saw math and i was like this is this this co- this is a movie this can't not be patterned by yeah. the universe it can't it doesn't make mm. sense like and we me and kelvin have been trying to link up for time and we're never in the same country at the same time like ever so and even when we are it's like oh i'm in this part and you're in that part and doesn't really work and it's not often don't get me wrong do you know what i'm saying but when it does happen it's like i missed you do you know what i mean it's like ah oh, we just missed each other or whatever like lynn she's been trying to link us up for mm. time for yeah. time a mutual friend of ours and it just didn't work and now this crazy do you know what i mean crazy so um one last thing um that we want to do Yep, well, I guess we can all hydrate now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your listeners, is Bull. raining outside. Raining it's pouring, bullets man. in Berlin. It'll still be raining when the show airs. Um, <laughs> one thing I want all you guys to just drop a, a quick gem. Um, one thing I respect about um, all three of you is um, I'm able to, like, kind of satellite your circles close enough to see that you guys understand um, that you have to work hard. Um, um, on music and, and I see the attention to detail and the professionalism in all of your branding and everything you guys do um, and that's something I'm big in and, and when I pick up on that I always try to support artists and what I like to do on this show is have artists share things with other artists about things that might help them you know because there's not a lot of spaces on radio or TV or whatever where artists can hear from other artists and like really learn things you know have producers teach things um, and so um I think something that's that's common to all three of you and unique is that you've all been able to establish yourselves in cities you're not from, you know, and kind of put, put, you know, put your feet on the ground and get something going. Can you each talk a little bit about the energy behind getting that started and, and keeping it going so that other people might learn how to do that, you know? Um, I think the most important thing about that like getting something going in a city you're not from is emotional intelligence and being genuine. I think those two things, understanding that your genuine content will then create your path for you. Do you understand? Like it's not about finding out what's hot in that city or trying to link up with the most hot artists there to gain their track. It's not about that. It's about real people connecting with real people. Do you know what I mean? And it's, it's just about how genuine you can be with yourself and saying, this is what I can offer. Do you like it? That's it. And finding a platform to put it on. Do you know what I mean? Like Colors, shout out Colors, because they put me on. Do you know what I mean? Like they heard I was- Shout out Phil, yeah. Yeah, if I, hadn't, if I hadn't built the platform I built back in London, they might not have heard of me. And I get to find out that they knew about me before I even knew about the platform. So it was like, and that's just because of the fact that I was, I've only ever, even if I don't feel like the wider sense of the audience understands. That's another thing. Don't be discouraged because you feel like everybody you put your music to doesn't like or understand you. It's not about that. It's about connecting with those few people and having those people ride for you until more of those people come. And it's and you can only get that from genuine content. That's mm. it. That's that. The one thing I would harp on all the time is just do what feels right. Don't do what you think is right. Don't go to the sound you think you should do. Don't rap the way you think you should rap. Don't be. Don't act the way you think you should act on on social media or or on, or put the captions you think you should put. Just do what's right for you. Do you know what I'm saying? Treat Amen. everything like it's Facebook. Like that's how that's what I do now. I treat all of my social media and all of all of my um, all of my situations like with people that I don't know. Like it's Facebook. You could you could know a member of my family, and if I start if I act differently to how they how, how the member of my family knows me to act, then there's a divide there. I've div- I've divided myself. I'm somebody who I'm not supposed to be, and I don't I don't ever want to look back or go to my family home and feel like. They don't, they don't understand me anymore. Do you know what I mean? And the only way I can maintain that level of energy, as you're talking about, is just being as genuine as possible and, and staying in touch and aligned with the emotional intelligence of a situation. If something works, understand why it works by connecting with the people that it worked for. And those people are the people that, like Kelvin said, that understand you. Do you get me? The ones that ride for you. Do you get me? Like Mad Flow said, like the ones that, the ones that are there and the ones that understand you and respect you and know who you are. Do you know what I mean? And, and will always always have a love for you and your content you have to treat it that way and if you don't 
and it works for you, then it works for you. But at some point, it won't work for you anymore. Mm -hmm. And you won't know what to do at that point. You'll have other people telling you what to do, and you're living somebody else's dream. And that's that's not what we're here for. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, really, the, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, mm -hmm. too often people are trying to trying to pretend or, or seem like they're doing something they're not. It's like how you're perceived. People are more worried about how they're perceived than how they generally are. And at that point, that's that disconnect you're talking about, where it's like you're trying to live the life other people expect you to live as opposed to living the life that you want to live. And, and, and when, you, when it comes to any type of form of, of creation or art, if it's not genuine, you can't genuinely genuinely write from, from your own experiences and your own emotions, you're not going to be able to touch anyone. Mm. Phony emotions, synthesized emotions, get laid bare, especially in music. And if you try and synthesize that emotion that you can't, you've never really had, no one's going to be able to, uh, to connect with you, connect with your music. Mm. But if you write something that you know, that you've really experienced, you create something that it speaks to you, because you're not just putting lyrics on a page, you're creating an emotion mm. that, that you felt that hopefully other people can feel. And if it's a genuine one, that people will connect. And that's how you have staying power as an artist. Mm. If, you're, if you're faking your whole life, and, and like Chase said, they mm. pull the carpet out from under you, you don't know how to be real. You fake so long, you don't even know how to be real anymore. Mm. So if you just stay real, dedication, you know what I mean? Like, even the small things end up mattering. And what you don't say sometimes is more powerful than what you do say. Mm. You know what I mean? Right. Very true. Um, since that has been put in a nutshell greatly by you too. I think I'll touch on another subject, which is moving out of your comfort zone, hmm. which is absolutely key to being an artist. Um, I see, especially being a rapper, I guess, um, I see that it is some form of competition, like a competitive sport, a friendly competition, not a competition you want to win by all means, because that's going to fuck yourself up. <laughs> um, no, I'm talking about, it's like a muscle, man. If you keep on doing the same exercise, the muscle won't grow. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why it is good sometimes to work with other people, to sit back and listen and take up constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. That's just such a big thing. The, like, the best things I've learned as an artist was when I just sit back and shut up mm -hmm. and just listen to what does my what does the consumer the person my my potential friend because i don't really like the word fan i think there's a, something like hollywood creative like how we started doing music was we would just sit all of us somewhere together and start singing and then instruments get added and etc but we were accessible and i think that's how it should be so what do your friends your listeners what do they have to say what does another artist despite of how big they may appear through their following or whatever, or how successful, what do other artists have to say? What does somebody have to say to the song that is white? What does somebody have to say to the song who's black or who's Asian or whatever? And um, I'm not saying you should create music or art that pleases everyone, but what I'm saying is consider your environment and learn from it. Everything you really need to know is around you. Mm. It's not only within yourself, but it is around you. So connect the dots and then it's going to work and the dots it touches back up on what you said real people mm. by listening to people you understand okay are they real are these people that i deem to be real genuine good people and then how do they take up my art and then you will be able to tell just by how people perceive your music if these are people you'll get along with in life mm. that's what's up that's what's up yo i'd like to thank all of you for being here um Everybody out there, wherever you're listening, however you're listening, send some warmth, energy, and thanks to Kelvin Colt, Matt Flows, and Shay Lingo for being here in Swim Good Radio. And you can check them all out tomorrow night at Bada House for the first ever virtual love here in Berlin. Um, I think doors are at 7, showtime's like 9, 9.30, so make sure you get up in there. Say peace, fellas. Yeah. Amen. Peace. Trip, trip, Allah. Trip. Peace. Das war Swim Good vom New Yorker Original Stimulus. Der Flachkörper in den Rap-Szene-Pool.